Qualifying Group 1 and uh, they're going to be going out for the cadets in a, in a short while. This is half of our field uh, for the cadets today and the uh, groups will be running, or the, the, the classes, so the cadets will have two groups because there's too many of them to fit out on circuit <laughs> at the same time and uh, effectively this two-part qualifying uh, will be merged into one. Everybody's times from Group 1 and Group 2 will be put in order. And it can mean it's very tricky for us to track, Howard, because, you know, statistically, you would expect yes. half of the qualifiers for our pre-A final. I should say, that's what drivers are trying to achieve here. They're trying yes. to get a quick time in, so they automatically get into the pre-A final, and that guarantees them a spot in the A final as well, and that's where the big points are. Statistically, you would expect half of the drivers on that grid for the pre-A final to come from this first group, but that may not necessarily be the case. Uh, no, indeed. It's, it's, it, it's a little bit more complicated uh, than that. So it's about the relative positions um, through, uh, through qualifying, as I understand it. Yeah. And that's to do with, uh, for if we get a conditions change partway through. Um, this might be a niche reference. I don't know if anyone followed Formula E in, in the sort of early seasons, but there was a round they did it in London. I think it was season two. And it started to rain between qualifying groups. Mm. And it caused absolute chaos for how the grid was arranged. And yep. so after that, they moved to a system much like what we're seeing here, where your relative position within the session dictates where you are on the, on the grid. In other words, the, first, the, the top fastest drivers from each session will be on Get first and second row, yeah. will be your front row will be first and second on that grid obviously the fastest out of those two times will get the pole position and then we'll move to the two second uh, fastest drivers from each of the respective sessions that's your second row and then we do uh, third fourth uh, as the sorry then we do the third fastest from each session as row three and so on and so forth if the lap times are equal by the way if it's a dead heat it'll be done by who set that lap first um, shout out to any any F1 fans who were watching back in Jerez in '97. <laughs> so, um, hey, I was there. <laughs> so, uh, it'll be based on who set the lap time first. So, it's a little bit of that means we get a, a not the whole picture in any one session. Yeah, uh, effectively, um, uh, in that sense. So, you're, you're absolutely right, mate. It's a little bit different for us to get our get our, get our heads around, but it's a good system. It's a fair system to allow for those changes in conditions. Um, for the drivers. Uh, whilst we're getting ready for that as well, I think we'll, we'll also take the opportunity to just go through our scores on the doors for the cadets. This is our category for drivers between the ages of 7 and 10. Uh, and we spoke to our championship leader in the paddock walk, which you'll be able to see during the lunch break later on uh, today. Ilya Veliko has had a very good season so far. 1,027 points. Uh, in total is what uh, Ilya has scored so far. This is also one of those scenarios as Howard's just pulled up the championship table on alphatiming.co.uk, results.alphatiming.co.uk, forward slash club 100. We can find all the details for the season so far. And uh, today, um, we're kind of in that mid-state with the cadets where there's different ways of you cutting the cake. At the moment, though, we've not quite got drop scores into play yet. I just like to look at what have they got on the board? What have yeah. they got in the in the back pocket at the moment? Ilya Veliko uh, has got a, a, a decent lead at this stage on 1,027. His closest challenger on 989 is Wyatt McAllister. Yeah, absolutely. And and that's the key thing to bear in mind as well. In much the same way as we just said about the qualifying session. It's a good fair system, but it means we don't get the full, full picture until that pre-final grid is, yeah. is published. In the sort of same way, it's in the towards the end of the season, um, it gets a bit, uh, it, it gets very interesting with those drop scores hmm. uh, and how uh, they're doing that. As we are now on to um, the, the sessions, session has begun. indeed, uh, the ten minute countdown is uh, is going down there at the top of your screen. So yeah, um, drop scores, uh, the worst two results that you have across the season in this Cadets Championship and four results in the juniors, provided yep. I'm getting that the right way around, uh, get dropped uh, at the end of the year. That's to account for force majeure circumstances, if nothing else. Maybe something, you know, they do a fantastic job of keeping these Club 100 carts uh, ship shape and Bristol fashion and, and all working. 
But let's say that you have a mechanical that's out of, out of your control. It means that your season doesn't get upset by that. That's part of the reason why we have the, the drop score uh, system in place. But what it does mean is it keeps things quite open until the end, and it just means that towards the end of the season you might need to break out the abacus and just, yes. and just uh, work out what the situation is. But as Andrew says, at the moment it's useful to look at that whole score. How many points do they have in the bank? Because it gives you some idea of... Um, you know, if they go on to have uh, drop scores, have they still got a good ser series of results so far? Just to run through, uh, I've picked up the wrong uh, the graphic there, but who we've got out in this first group, uh, you are starting to see um, some of the times come in. So Cadet Group 1 qualifying, not Super Cadet uh, <laughs> qualifying, as I, as I put there. It's the same group that we had for out for practice. So George Palmer Mobsby, Frederick Navarro, Jack Redfern, uh, Matty Punku Wright, uh, Paulina uh, Vinyaska, Josh Byrne, Oliver Bamford Sr., Ashley Wado Mitchell, Julio Valiani, uh, Ruben Mamalock, Tyler Mason Gray, Oscar Wilson, Jay Hansford, Ollie Hardy, Toby Paris, uh, Quentin Vachure, Charlie Wainwright, Jamie Warner, and Emily Meredith. Those are the drivers that are out or should be out in this session. Uh, I was probably going to correct me and say, no, there's different drivers out there. That's Super Cadet Practice 1. It's got me again. Ignore me. Good start, Andrew. Uh, <laughs> seven minutes and 40 seconds. <laughs> Howard, save me from I this situation. Think, Who's going quick? I mean, I I think it's Jacob Underhill, Harrison Bishop, uh, Reese Cranston, uh, Miles Burton, Solomon Adenjil, uh, excuse me, Adenji, uh, Wyatt McAllister, Daniel uh, Visniauskas, uh, Harry Bell, Hayden Adams, Elliot Dimelo, Hendricks Bennett, Charlie Walker, uh, Charlie Walker, Timmy Shahini, uh, Jakob Schultz, uh, Schultz uh, Max Lovell, Antoni Chinecki, Tom Grulos, and Ewan Farrelly. Thank I you, Howard. Are your drivers in that session? Correct. Sorry, I went through that list quite quickly. <laughs> Apologies if I've got any. I'm still still learning some of the names out there, so do bear with me, folks. But that's your drivers out in this session. Jacob Underhill uh, making overtake. We're not racing yet, but uh, not. Jacob Underhill, I believe, was fastest in. Yes, he was in Group One. I yep. uh, was very pleased with himself afterwards. Uh, had a very uh, brief chat with him. Big beaming smile. Yep. Uh, his dad knows this place very well. Dan Underhill. Uh, you know. It's Raced here in Club 100 in the past. Yeah, it's organised uh, charity events around here in the in the past as well. PLD. Um, so that is a, a very good start for Jacob White. McAllister goes to the top of the time sheets with a 58.032. Uh, you mentioned the abacus. It's a good job we don't need to use the DDMM abacus today because it's still in pieces from Super One last <laughs> week, uh, where we did see uh, McAllister's older brother Logan racing. I was wondering what this collection of beads on the floor was. Oh dear. <laughs> oh. There's a bit of a spin. There's a double spin for a couple of our cadets there. Through turn one, aka uh, Oblivion. Uh, Wisniewskis goes to pole position, 57.511. Still plenty of time though for the drivers to get those laps in. I always think it's the most aptly named corner in Club 100 is that Oblivion. Because um, you really do have to throw the cart in um, to, to that corner. Um, which, as you saw there, it, 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 if something, uh, it, it can be, um, it's so much fun to throw the cart through there, um, but it does just mean that if, if, you, uh, if you do lose a bit of grip through there, then it's so easily done just to go into a bit of a spin there. So, uh, But they'll all be recovered and get back underway again and, and get back on the pace soon enough. But uh, I, I always enjoy that oblivion through the, the crook is the second part of that. It's the left-hander of, the, of obliv oblivion. And then uh, the crook is the right-hander. And um, it's a really fun bit of couple of corners, I think. It really helps you sort of psychologically go, right, come on, let's do this lap. Um, so I, I love it and that run up to Christmas Corner the uphill braking zone into Christmas Corner which means that you can be super late uh, on the brakes uh, we see it here uh, as we're uh, we're watching Timmy Sh Shahini uh, going through there Timmy who we spoke to at Bookmore Park in the grid walk has had a, uh, a good season so far be looking to get up into the A final uh, here today uh, we covered the fact uh, that Harry Bell's put himself on the provisional no, pole. we have not. Uh, Four so and a half minutes to go. Goes to the top there with a 57.157. This is Ashby Corner we're looking at now. 
uh, that they're just going through there. That's the opposite of Christmas Corner insofar as it's downhill braking. Um, but still uh, a good overtaking opportunity. And we, we should make clear as well uh, that there's, there's a bit of runoff from that corner that the drivers uh, are, are allowed to make use of there, um, which can often be good if there's an overtaking it means they've got the space to all sort themselves out there. So they're coming through the, the right-hander of Inkermans is the fast right-hander they're going through at the top of this shot. And then the downhill braking into Ashby Corner. It's um, Because it opens out on exit, it you can carry more speed through there than than you perhaps would first think uh, when doing this circuit. Mm. Um, but yeah, I find it's... I do find, because of that downhill braking though, and the way it almost feels like it tightens towards the apex, it doesn't, the track's perfectly wide, but just the conventional racing line means you sort of all file into that same space. I always think an overtake on the brakes into Ashby looks deceptively easy. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's actually quite difficult to, to get it bang on the money and and... Uh, you know, judge the braking point right, not outbreak yourself, not have any contact, just misjudging uh, the, the slowdown with yourself relative to the other cart. So there's there's definitely uh, more skill than uh, perhaps first meets the eye um, through that Ashby corner. Here we are towards the end of the lap. Harry Bell's just gone quicker again. Yep. The driver third in uh, total points at the moment. First driver to go sub-57 with a 56.9 Five. There's the clubhouse here at Wilton Mill. It's, uh, fantastic to see so many people out and about today in some very nice early morning conditions here at the circuit. That's, uh, that's the number 12 of uh, Hendrix Bennett that we just saw going through there. This is the 39 of Harry Bell, your uh, provisional pole sitter at the moment. Through increments he goes. Just a couple of minutes then left on the clock here for this cadet group one. And as we say, we can't actually tell you for definite who will be on pole <laughs> at the end of this session because of the, this relative position nature. So at the moment, we could tell you that Harry Bell will be on the front row. Yep. Provided he hasn't accrued any penalties or such. Um, but we can't tell you which position he will occupy on that front row. Uh, such is the nature of this. We will have to wait and see what time gets set in that, uh, in that second group. Uh, now, if you don't make it onto the grid of the race you're after, maybe you were hoping to make it into the pre-A final uh, and... Uh, that was not forthcoming in qualifying. It does not mean all hope is lost in terms of getting into the A-final. Um, there are promotion spots available. Or excuse me. It doesn't mean all hope is lost in getting to the pre-A-final, I should say. Because there's promotion spots available from the pre-B-final to the pre-A-final. Uh, the top two positions, I believe, uh, from that get you up into that pre-A-final. And then a similar system is empl employed in the B and A-final. Um, is how that works and I should make, make clear as well that whilst we're saying the terms pre-final and final the points awarded uh, are, the same. are the same for each same value um, it's more a sort of I, I guess you don't, it's, you, don't it's, get a, you don't get a pot for a pre-final win that's true that's true that is the key difference um, yes very good point to, to highlight that um so that's where the name pre-final comes from because of the, the, the trophy situation there. But from a points perspective, they are, uh, they are very valuable, those pre-finals. Ten seconds to go. Harry Bell still on pole position, uh, provisional pole position in this first group. Jacob Underhill, his dad right there, uh, in P2. So it's the nine-year-old from Bletchley, not too far from here. We've just popped up the A5. Uh, his favourite driver is Lewis Hamilton. And uh, likes his computer games and his tried out motocross as well. Checkered flag is out. Can anyone displace Bell off the top of the timesheets for at least this group? This won't necessarily be pole position, but could be pole position. Bell from Underhill. There goes Harry Bell over the line. No quicker. Jacob Underhill is the closest competition at the moment on a 57-0. I think he's about halfway around the circuit now. 
drivers are able to finish their laps if they crossed start finish before the checkered flag came out. Uh, Daniel Wisniauskas goes up to third or holds third place. I think it is pretty much only Jacob Underhill out there at the moment who could beat that time. There's Timmy Shahini over the line in the Sebastian Vettel replica helmet. There is Underhill and it's 58-185. So Bell, quickest of the first group of cadets from Underhill, Wisniauskas. Good run there from Miles Burton as well in the number 34 to fourth, fifth place for White McAllister. That was cadet group one.